There's a feature in QuickBooks called My Company. Basically what it is, is when we went through the Easy Step interview and set up our company file, if you remember, the very first screen asked us to put in information about the company, like the address, and if we had a federal tax ID number, website, email, things like that. Well, what if we misspelled it, or we forgot to put some of that information in? This is where we're going to go to actually edit that information. This little section is called My Company. Let me flip over to QuickBooks and I'll show you real quick how to get into the My Company feature. All you have to do to get to the My Company feature is go up to the menu at the very top of your screen and click on Company, and then you'll see My Company. In here, this is all the information that you used when you went through the Easy Step interview to set up your company file. Let's say that I misspelled Coatesville, for example, right here. All I have to do to edit that information is come over to this little pencil and then I can edit anything I see on the screen there. So I'm going to take out that E and if I wanted to add a phone number I could certainly do that. I can go ahead and add it right here. And of course I can add fax, email, and website here as well. You'll notice on the left hand side that I'm currently on the contact info. If I click on legal information it brought in the same information that I had used to set up the company with, and if the legal information happens to be different, maybe the company is owned by some sort of organization, I could fill out all of that information right here. And obviously, I would want to edit Coatesville again, make sure I spell it correctly. The next tab down on the left is your company ID information. If you remember, it asked us to put in our federal ID number, and we decided not to do that. But if I wanted, I could here. And if I wanted to put in the Social Security number, I could here. Maybe I'm not incorporated, and that's what I'm using. You'll find there are a lot of places in QuickBooks where it asks for some, what I call, personal information. And if you don't have to have it, I wouldn't put it in here. Next on the left is Report Information. This is the information on the first month of your fiscal year, your tax year, if you have a particular income tax form you use. And remember here, I told you to leave it on other or none unless you happen to be using another software package that works with QuickBooks for tax purposes. And the last option on the left is your payroll tax form identification. If you have a particular person that is preparing and signing your payroll tax forms, you might want to put their contact information in here their title, and their phone number. And that's really all you have to do to change that information about your company. I'm going to click OK and see what else is here on the screen. Now a couple of other things you'll notice is your version of QuickBooks. You'll notice it's right over here and it's going to have your license number and all that information. You're also going to see a lot of services that QuickBooks can offer as ancillary services to QuickBooks. For example, when you decide to do payroll, if you decide to use the Intuit payroll service, it is not free. You do have to pay for it. Here's where you can turn it on. You might also want to buy from Intuit the merchant services account that they have so that you can accept credit cards through QuickBooks. You might want to order checks, and they also had some additional things you could purchase as well. And all of that is in the My Company information here. All you have to do when you're finished is go to the top of that window and click the X and that will put you back on what we call the home screen. And that's really all there is to the option called My Company in QuickBooks. Let's go ahead now and jump over to Section 4 and talk about identifying the components of the QuickBooks environment. We're currently working in Module 2, and this is the module called Getting Started. We're in Section 4 now, and I want to take a few moments and talk to you a little bit about identifying the components of the QuickBooks environment. Basically, what I mean by that is I'd like to go over the screen itself with you, get you familiar with terminology, maybe how you can change some things so they work better for you. And that's all we want to do here is just kind of get you familiar with things. Let me go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I will get started talking to you about the home screen. Let's go ahead and start at the top and work our way down. The first thing I want you to notice is that your company name is right here in your title bar at the top. It also tells you the version of QuickBooks you're using and which screen you happen to be on. In this case, your home screen. This is what we call your home screen right here. The next thing you'll notice is a menu bar. 
and you're probably familiar with using these in other programs. There's a few things here that I want you to get familiar with. First of all, under the Edit option, there's a find here that we're going to use when we're searching for anything, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Also, there's some preferences we're going to be looking at over in Module 3. A lot of these options that you see up here, you can also see on your home screen. For example, when it says Vendors right here, it also says Vendors right here. That's a quick way to get to what we call the Vendor Center. Or also, if it says Customers here, Here's the Customer Center. That's another way to get to customers. So you'll have multiple ways to get to the same place. On the left-hand side of your screen here, you have what we call your icon bar. And as you click on the different options here, you will open the different windows. Some people prefer this to be across the top of their screen. And you have an option to change that if you like. The way you change that is you go to View on your menu and choose Top Icon Bar. And now you'll see it's up here at the top. It's really just a matter of personal preference. I prefer this myself because I feel like I have more room to work on the screen from left to right when that is on. Now something else that I'm not sure how people work without this, but there's something called the Open Windows List that you can turn on. If I go up to View and choose the first option, Open Windows List, then this will appear on the left. Now what this does is every single time I click on an icon on my home screen, let's say I click on Create Invoices, I've now opened a window that will allow me to actually put an invoice in. If I don't want to close it for whatever reason, I can just come over here and go back to Home and open something else or do whatever I need to do, and when I'm ready, I can go back to Create Invoices. When I'm ready to close this window, all I have to do is use the X that's in the top right corner of that window to close it. And now you can see that I only have Home over here under the open windows. You also have here your home page, which you're on now, and also your insights. Let me just mention the insights real quick. The insights tab is going to allow you to see what some people call a dashboard. It's a quick overview of what's going on with your company file. Now obviously we have no data in here yet, but if we did, we could see a quick profit and loss right here. We could see information about our income down here. We could see information about our expenses over here, and there's a little donut graph it looks like over here. Once we get some information in later on, we'll go back and look at this. I'm going to flip back to the home page. Now let's talk a little bit about how the home page is actually set up. There are actually five sections. The first section that you see here, where it says Vendors, this is Accounts Payable. If you're not familiar with that term, anything having to do with the bills that you pay that come in the mail, this is where you're going to work with that. You can see here you can enter your bills and you can pay bills. If you work at the Purchase Order System, this is where you could enter Purchase Orders, receive your inventory, and then a bill would come in the mail for that. This is your Accounts Receivable section down here, and this is probably where you'll spend the majority of your time. Accounts Receivable has to do with customers. Customers are people or businesses that buy from you, whereas when we talk about vendors up here, these are people or businesses you buy from. That's a good way to remember that. This has your entire flow chart as far as customers are concerned. You'll notice sometimes you estimate jobs, Sometimes you invoice customers, that's how you're going to get paid, then they pay you, and obviously at some point the money goes in the bank. The next section down here has to do with your payroll. You'll notice that if you had gone through the Easy Step interview and said, yes, I want to use the payroll service, this would have populated some icons for payroll. Since I did not tell it that, the only one I have is the Enter Time option. The next section over here where it says Company, these are things that have to do with the file itself, not necessarily specific customers or specific vendors. This chart of accounts is the most important thing in QuickBooks right here. Get really, really, really familiar with that. We'll be talking about it in a later module. But all of the money that flows in or out of QuickBooks will go into one of these accounts in the chart of accounts. The items and services, these are things that you would sell your customer 
or sometimes you purchase them as well. We'll have a list of those. And there's some other things here that you may or may not use, like the time tracking, for example, or the inventory activities, or ordering checks and tax forms. Really, those are ancillary things that you may or may not use. And then we'll talk about the calendar in a later module as well. The last little section here is your banking section. All of these items that you see here have to do with something that happens at the bank. You make deposits. You write checks. You have a checkbook register. You reconcile your checking account or your credit cards. So again, you have five sections. You have your vendor section, which is accounts payable, customers, which is accounts receivable, your payroll, company, and then banking. Now on the right, there's a couple of things. First of all, this section that says account balances. Once we get some accounts set up for you, like your checking account, savings, etc., you would see them in the list with the balance. And one of the ways you can go to that particular account is to double click on it right from this list. These are all things that Intuit can sell you. You can turn on payroll, accept credit cards, order checks from them, or activate T-Sheets, which is timesheets. If you don't want to see this, just hit this little arrow on the right, and that will hide it for you. And there's one more thing I'll mention, and that is your backup status. We haven't really talked about backing up yet, but if you have the desktop version of QuickBooks, you will want to back it up. And that way, if you ever need to use that backup for some reason, you would have it. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can actually do it manually, where you actually put in a flash drive, a CD, some other form of media where you can save it to. The other option is, for a fee, this is not free, and two, it will back it up for you. And so you'll just see right here, it says your data's not been backed up. It may have just been backed up, so don't always rely on that to tell you. Again, if you don't want to see this, just use this little arrow to kind of hide that and get it out of your way. And that gives you a quick overview of how the home screen is set up. One more quick thing. If you happen to navigate somewhere in QuickBooks, let's just say I clicked Receive Payments here, and I don't know how to get back to home, maybe you didn't have your open Windows list here, you'll notice the very first icon says Home, and that's always going to take me back to my home screen. That's a real quick way of actually looking at the home screen. What I want to do now is take you over into Section 5, and we're going to talk a little bit in Section 5 about how to upload your data from the desktop version to the QuickBooks Online if you decide to move to the online version. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to get a free QuickBooks Pro 2020 introductory course, click over there. And... Click over there to watch all the videos in this QuickBooks Pro 2020 playlist.